Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss a very interesting, interesting topic, and that's going to be looking at another laboratory project. Uh, recall that laboratory projects are very interesting math uh, projects at the end of some of the chapters in my calculus book. And now we'll look at uh, Taylor polynomials. And, and in per this particular video, we'll go over just question one of that series. But make sure to follow along uh, for the rest of the series, as it's going to be very very interesting. So let's just dive right in. So the tangent line approximation L of x is the best first degree or linear approximation to f of x near x equals a and that's because f of x and L of x have the same rate of change or derivative at a. So if you haven't already yeah, make sure to watch my early videos on linear approximation but to get a recap or yeah, just recall from my early videos what I mean by uh, linear approximation. If we had a function of like this, if we, this is the x, y axis like that. Let's say we have a function like this. It's a curve. This is our f of x. And we want to approximate near it because it could be complicated. So uh, might as well work with a uh, function uh, with a linear approximation, but sometimes it's easier. So if we have something like this, and yeah, let's say we want to approximate somewhere near this point here. I'll draw this in red. So what we could do is look at the tangent line directly across that and draw a straight line like that. So this is our uh, L of x approximation. And it's just going to be a linear function here. And the thing is at this point here at um, x equals a, we have the derivative of the line L of x, so this is going to be, well, the derivative is going to equal to the derivative of f of x at x equals to a. So just we'll just write L prime equals to, well, f prime at a. And this one's at any, any value there. It's going to be just a straight line, so the slope is the same for all x values. Yeah, so as you can see here, a line like that would be a good approximation well, for a, a, a near this a, or in other words, if it's somewhere around from here to here if you just look at it. So I'll just draw a line across here. So this could be uh, roughly, yeah, this could be roughly this section nearby. We can consider that as a quote, reasonable approximation like that. Reasonable, an approximation. And you could uh, always uh, make sure to watch my earlier videos if you want to get caught up in more detail on this kind of approximation. So yeah, that is the linear or the tangent line linear approximation. Yeah, but as you could see here, this is a curve we're trying to uh, approximate. So it's a uh, linear approximation, not always the best one, especially when you get further away from the A. So for a better approximation than a linear one, let's try a second degree or quadratic approximation. In other words, we're going to approximate a curve by a parabola instead of a straight line. To make sure that the approximation is a good one, we stipulate the following right here. And this is what we're going to stipulate when we want to approximate the parabola. We'll say that p of a equals to f of a. So in other words, p and f should have the same value at a. And then p prime of a equals to uh, p, I mean f prime of a. In other words, f, p and f should have the same rate of change at a or the same derivative. And the second derivative of both p and f are equal at a. Though, in other words, the slopes of p and f should change at the same rate at a, so yeah, this is the second derivative or the acceleration of the function p and f. Uh, so now let's look at question one. So question one states, find the quadratic approximation. Yeah, p of x equals to a plus bx plus cx squared to the function f of x equals cos x. Uh, that satisfies conditions uh, i, double i, i3, or just these three over there, with a equals to 0. And it states graph p and f and the linear approximation l of x equals 1 on a common screen. And it states, yeah, and then I'll also comment on how well the functions p and l approximate f. So let's just jump right in. But before we approximate it, just to get a better idea, let's graph this function f of x. So we have the function f of x equals cos x, and this is at the, we want to approximate at x equals to, at x equals to zero. In other words, our a is equal to zero, like that. So if we were just to graph this at that uh, region nearby, so remember, uh, cos function is just a, uh, just a trigonomic function like this. Recall it, it just looks something like this. I'll just go, go like that. Yeah, here I just uh, fixed that up. So this is our cos 
function or cosine function like that. Yeah, so recall from earlier videos, this is just how you uh, graph it like that, and you can learn more by watching my trigonomic videos. Uh, and so then at x equals to zero, or a equals to zero right here, we have this value, this is one. So that value is just one, like that. Yeah, or in other words, we have at this point there, we have uh, cos of zero, or cosine zero is just equal to one. And now if we were to draw that L of x line, well, we could just draw that straight across like that. This is going to be, yeah, this is going to be our L of x equals to 1. So you can see that approximation it's, uh, gets pretty way off uh, when you get anywhere further from uh, x equals 0. So yeah, you could just see from this that if we had a problem set that it was opening downwards, it would be a much better uh, approximation. So let's look at what we need to find. So we want, so we want a, a parabola or a quadratic approximation a p of x equals to ax plus bx plus cx squared. And this is uh, well such that the the three requirements are met. Yes, right, such that. And if you look up to these three um, requirements, we have the first one, p of a equals uh, f of a, and then the second and uh, first derivatives. So we want such that, I'll just put one instead of i, uh, such that p of a, I mean, p of a and a is zero. Yeah, so I'll just write p of 0 equals to f of 0. Remember, this f of 0 is just going to be cosine of 0, which just equals to 1. Let's put that there just for reference. And then now uh, we want the derivative p of 0 equals to f prime of 0, like that. And uh, yeah, we'll just solve that later. And the third requirement is the second derivative at a equals 0 equals to the second derivative of the f of uh, function cosine. So let's first solve for the first and second derivatives. So we have uh, p of x, this just equals to a plus bx plus cx squared, and then the derivative p prime of x just gonna be equal to, well, a derivative of a is zero, then we have this b there, plus bring the two down, so we have two c and then x. So that's just the derivative of that x squared. And then now we have that the second derivative do the same thing. The derivative of, P is, of B is just a constant, so it goes to zero. This part's gonna be two C. And then likewise, I'm just gonna do the other side on, on over here for F of X. Remember, this is just gonna equal to cosine of X. So then the derivative, F prime of X, this is gonna be equal to, well, recall that this is going to be negative sine of X. And then likewise, the second derivative of this, this is going to be derivative of this one, negative, and then the derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x, so we keep the negative there. Yeah, so now we equate them at a equals zero. So that's what we have p of zero. Well, this equals to, when you plug that in, all those vanish, all we're left with is a. This equals to f of zero, which just equals to cosine of zero. Remember, that just equals to one. So we have a equals to one, so we've solved for this constant there. And likewise, the second or the first derivative of p of zero equals to just look at here the two c x vanish when we plug in zero, so this equals to b. This equals to f prime of zero, and f prime of zero over there is just going to be negative sine of zero. And recall that sine of zero in my earlier videos this is just zero. So then we have b equals to zero, like that. And likewise, and likewise the second derivative p of zero, this equals two. When we look at here, the x, there is no x, so that's just gonna be two, zero, just a constant. So this equals two on this side, f uh, double prime of zero, this equals to negative cosine zero, just equals to negative one, like that. So in other words, what would we have here, and we can rearrange this, this divide by two on both sides, so we get c equals to negative one half. So that is our constant, so thus, we have our parabola p of x equals to a is one minus c is one half, oh yeah, this is gonna be a plus negative one half, in other words, we're just gonna have uh, minus x squared over two. And uh, yeah, you could just see that over here. You guys remember a plus bx plus c x squared, the c is negative one half, and then the b is zero. So that's what we have. So there is our approximation to it. So let's look at how it, is when we graph them together. I'll just scroll over here. So I graphed this with the Desmos calculator. So yeah, here I graphed it with the Desmos one. I zoomed in as you could see over here. 
The uh, blue one is that p of x equals one minus x squared over two. And it's aligning way closer to this f of x equals to the cosine over there. And then we also have the red straight line across there. So this is much better. So notice how the parabola slash quadratic approximation aligns itself uh, much better to the cosine function than the linear approximation. So yeah, that's how it is. And if you want to see the full one over there, just click it over here. Yeah, so let's just put this here in projector mode. So yeah, this is the best <laughs> graphic calculator I've seen. So as you can see, yeah, so it's only for near that uh, a value, a equals zero. So it looks something like that. It lines up pretty cool around it there. And then the, uh, the L of x equals one, that just, <laughs> it all it does is just touches the peaks at every cosine value there. I'll just go zoom in there. So yeah, it's very, very cool kind of approximation. So yeah, that is just uh, question one. So uh, stay tuned for the later ones. And yeah, that is all for real view. Followed along, got re uh, basically recapped on uh, linear approximation, and also now have an idea of the second degree approximation, or the uh, quadratic slash parabola approximation. Anyways, that is all for today. Hopefully you'll learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as viewing, the, viewing these notes on Steemit in article format, and also make sure to check out my math forums and post any cool math or science related stuff you find. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.